Welcome to more movies weekly. Number 30. And then they'll come for you. <laughs> this is the podcast where we like to talk about film, movies, cinema, all that kind of stuff. My name is Greg Fisher. His name is David Roberts. How are you doing this week, Dave? I am very well, gentlemen. Welcome to the house. Thank you, my friend. So this week we have been watching a classic 1934 movie called The Black Cat. It stars Boris Karloff and Bela Lugosi. So if you want to find out our thoughts about that, then keep watching. Okay, so The Black Cat, 1934, directed by Edgar G. Ulmer. Never heard of you, mate. But uh, I thought it did a damn fine job. So basically what happens is there's this young couple. They're on their honeymoon. They go to, what is it, Hungary? They meet some strange guy on the train. Strangers on a train vibe there, uh, who is played by Bella Lugosi. Uh, he kind of befriends them. And then uh, they get a bus ride after the train to take them where they're going to. But the weather's so bad that the bus crashes. So they get taken to this weird house where Bella Lugosi's friend is. He owns the house, and he is played by Boris Karloff, the very famous Boris Karloff. And uh, then all sorts of crazy shit starts to happen. Am I right? That's it. I think the the, the film is summed up by it's a lot of crazy shit. Um, <laughs> it's it's a, it's an interesting picture because of course this was the first Karloff and the go see um, team up. together on screen. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, they went on to do eight different films together. Yeah. Um, you know, all you know these horror uh, vibed films, um, and this is like a horror film that's pre code, pre code era exactly. Uh, uh, and it's, you know, this isn't far after the transition from silent films to exactly um, talkies. So yeah. it's right in a very unique period of time, really. And it resembles uh, modern filmmaking a lot more so than what predated it. Although yeah. it is also heavily influenced, of course, by what came before it. Um, I'm thinking most notably uh, German expressionist cinema of the 1920s, the Fritz Lang movies, uh, those kind of things. Uh, it's obviously using a lot of those techniques, but doing its own thing with it. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, particularly in the cinematography and the, and the way this film sets up, um, the sets are, are vast, or at least look vast. Yeah. Um, this big architecture, um, heavy emphasis on the angles, um, deep dark shadows. Um, you can see at this point, as we know, German directors are coming into Hollywood, and their influence from the expressionism is coming over, um, running away, running away from the Nazis. That exactly, and uh, finding a home in Hollywood, and that influence as you so succinctly put it has traveled with them it's it's there on sc screen for you to see and you can kind of go these uh, films from this very specific period are what kind of influenced the next 20 years of cinema really yeah well i hadn't seen this film before we watched it this week for the podcast but i'd seen on uh twitter last week i'd seen um, a gif from it with it was from the bit towards the end where they have the ritual and it was just like uh boris karloff with that sort of um cross in front of him and stuff and I thought what a striking and arresting image I must see this film that happened to me last year when we watched Haxan I'd never yes. heard of Haxan before and I seen a couple of images fr from the film on social media and straight away that's it once I see something like that and I think you know it sort of transfixes me I've just got to see the film I don't care what else whatever else could be the worst film ever made but if that image grabs me like it did with um, with the Black Cat here with Boris Karloff. I thought, I've just got to see this film. This is a crazy film, isn't it? I mean, it's obviously it's Halloween weekend. Uh, we've done quite a lot of horrors and stuff before. Last year, we did a Halloween special and we covered our top horror films and horror trivia and all sorts. And this, this year, we wanted to do something a little bit different. So we've gone back to you know, early Hollywood um, examples of what they were doing back then. And I think you've nailed it by, um, you know, basically highlighting that European influence on this cinema. It is. And, I mean, it's interesting, of course, because the, the story here is based on Edgar Allan Poe. Um, there's a lot of inspiration drawn from Alistair Crowley and kind of a cultist... Um, 
mythology for that was very a, a popular thing at the time. Yeah, um, that, that people were fascinated by. Um, so you can see it all seeping in. And this is a bit different from uh, kind of the films we get later on because after this, um, especially in the universal horrors, we get things like Dracula. We get things like Frankenstein. It's about monsters. It's about, uh, you know, creatures and stuff like that. Creature from the Black Lagoon, Deep Lagoon. Yeah. Um, it starts to become creature features as they yeah. became known. But here we've got something that it's it's not that it's a psychological, eerie, occultist yeah. uh, horror, uh, which uh, ages much better. Uh, it's more it's, it's more close better. to something like the um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, as in you know you're out in the middle of nowhere and you're trapped in yeah. someone's house and you've got to get away from them because they're you know mad as a box of frogs. What were they mad as snakes? The Yanks. Um, it's obviously all about the performances here as well. I mean. Boris Karloff and Bela Lugosi. For me, that's the main pull in this film. They're both brilliant. Um, the, the younger couple, played by David Manners and Julie Bishop, are a little bit... Uh, I mean, they are youngsters, and they're a little bit cardboard cut out, to be honest. Um, and, you know, the real meat on the bones in this one is provided by Lugosi and Karloff. And it's their sort of, um, you know... Um, their chemistry in a way because uh, they're at odds they know each other from the past um Lugosi has lost his wife and um you know this is the thing as well there's this all this talk about a war beforehand and a lot of death from the war so like you say it's like grounded in a lot of reality and stuff and it's very yeah. contemporary film like i say uh, very modern for the time you mentioned the architecture which is very art deco you know a lot of streamlined shapes a lot of curves you've got that kind of bauhaus furniture that's made of metal and stuff that was all you know it's very familiar to us still now but at the time yeah. that was incredibly new and um you know, so is, this is not like a castle with um, wet stone and cobwebs and candlelight everywhere. This is all like, you know, electric light, modern um, architecture. And um, I think, you know, that's the idea as well, isn't it? The house is supposed to be new, but it's built on top of an old fort where a load of people died. But there's something about it, I think, that um, for me is it trumps modern modern horror films in a lot of ways. Um especially when we talk about things like remakes and rehashes and same old idea. Um, this this has got a lot going for it that um, is missing from modern horror. Um, yeah, I think it's interesting because, I mean, this is... When we say a crazy film, this is a crazy film. It's necrophilia, drugs, torture, flaying, uh, skinning alive and all. <laughs> it's gone everything, you know. If, if, you know, it's bizarre uh it is irrational in in places that and completely you know goes over hedge piece but you're right that the biggest thing that sells it is is the performances which are in some ways over the top but in some ways perfect for exactly the characters they're they're playing it's a yeah. sinister um, performance but um the atmosphere they capture in this which is is more grounded in reality as we were saying yeah it, it does it's got something about it where you're like oh yeah this is weird you know and, and you can almost the, imagine it, you know, yourself on a train or something and you end up in some weird stranger's house and, like... It's just typical, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, it's been used a lot ever since, you know, House on the of course, yeah. Hill, um, like I said, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, all of those kind of things like, uh, oh, God, we're trapped with these weirdos. We've got to get out of here before they do something strange. But once the couple realise, you know... Um, something's going on here, we've got to get out of here, and then the heat starts to turn up... Then you get all this uh, revelation that he's actually a Satanist and he's got all of these bodies down in the basement that he's preserved and they're all in glass cases. And that's where your German expressionism comes in. Once yeah. you that all of that is revealed and you've got these sort of, like you said, these caroscuro images, there's the dark and then there's the figures lit up in these glass coffins almost. And he's there and he's got his black cat and he's just looking at him and he's like... Mm -hmm. And you think, that is so creepy. That is just so, so creepy. And I, I, the way my mind works when I'm watching these things, I'm thinking, you know, as much as we hate remakes, but if you went back to something like this and you did do uh, like a modern take on it, you could do it's something really cool. You, yeah, yeah, you could do something really cool with that and really creepy. 
the, yeah, once we get into the basement, I must say that the size of the staircase to get down there, it was like... It's the spiral ridiculous. staircase. It was like... I think it kept getting going. longer. The first time you see it, it's just <laughs> yeah. a couple of twists on it. Next time you see it, it just keeps, seems to keep going and going. And uh, yeah, it's it's good fun, isn't it? And there's a big explosion at the end and uh, yeah. all, all fun and games. It's uh, it's great life. And it's, it's interesting because it's only 60 minutes as well. Yeah. It, 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 it's also, really short... though, it feels like a full film. Mm. You know, like you could watch a three-hour film and it doesn't feel like three hours, but you feel like you've had a, you know, you're satisfied, you've had a good film. I yeah. felt like that with this. It was only short, but I felt like, well, it had a beginning, a middle, and end, and um, oh, considering yeah, they, the time and everything else, it was satisfying. They were efficient, weren't they, with the, yeah. with the storytelling. And, that's, and it was like, yeah. And all perfect. that music you've got as well. You've got like Tchaikovsky and Chopin and all that classic stuff. And there's the bit where Boris Karloff plays the organ and he does... The what has become basically a stereotype now. The do 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 do, and I thought, there you go. That's what that's from. I thought Lugosi and Karloff were amazing. I know they are a little bit over the top, but like you said, it's not long after coming out of the silent era. So a lot of these actors, they're kind of finding their way with adapting, you know, yeah, adapting from the stage where you have to project your voice, you have to be louder, you maybe have to overemphasize the emotions. You know, obviously, it took years and years and years to condense that down to the subtleties uh, of screen acting that we've come to know and love now. But I didn't mind that at it. all. I thought they were both brilliant in it. They were both invested in it. That's the good thing. Yeah, and it, it's what you want. You kind of want that over the topness in a in a yeah. in, in a any, way, ho- in, in any some, horror film. It's, but especially in something like this, you kind of go. You got these two tinned up. You want them to go, go for it. You know that. Yeah. You know, you kind of know what to expect. So, without them being over the top, it wouldn't have probably worked. Um, no, absolutely. Without going full throttle, so. I mean, there was a few things in there. There was one bit where the, um, the at the end when they're having a tussle and the henchman kind of goes flying off and he hits a wall and you see the whole wall shake and it's supposed to be a stone wall, but it's obviously you look at it and you think, well, that's a bit cardboard cut out. It's just of its time, yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, he intends you to play a part in that ritual. So there we go. What do you think of The Black Cat? Have you seen it? Do you like these old universal horror films, early Hollywood stuff, black and white stuff with Boris Karloff and Bella Lugosi? Does that float your boat? Let us know in the comments. It'd be great to hear from you. And there we are. So as it's Halloween weekend, we've just visited the past of horror cinema with The Black Cat, an early horror film. I thought we'd bring us right up to date and have just have a little conversation about uh, where horror has come to and modern horror uh, and where we are now. Um, not so much, um, there's obviously lots of remakes uh, floating about, which there has been for years, uh, things like Halloween and Dawn of the Dead, Candyman and stuff like that, but more the more unique horror films of today that yeah. um, have been released over the last couple of years what we've i think we've seen in the last few years is a complete rejection of a lot of the stuff that's the, the trends that have uh, been going for the last 20 years i think we come to more modern uh, films like hereditary and the witch and we started to see this change into more subtle atmospheric based in more of the occult horror films which i think are a lot more eerie than yeah than a lot of other horror films we've seen recently well this is it it's a huge genre and it, it, it therefore has a lot of sub-genres within it the slasher genre is obviously a big part of horror still is because like you say we're getting all these remakes we're getting the halloween candy man's just come out this year um i haven't seen that yet you've seen that what did you think of that just to just to briefly ask you the, the candy man remake um i found it quite disappointing i think it was indulgent and um Unfortunately, it was one of those films where they tried to, again, reboot the, the franchise in, in some kind of way, but they tried too hard to give an explanation of okay. who the character was. And... Well, when the original film came out, uh, I think it was the 90s, uh, it was really popular because that was quite a new thing for the time. The Candyman can. I mean, my favourite films of the 1980s of that sort of whole... Um, renaissance of horror was the Hellraiser movies. I, I really mm. enjoyed them. Um, I thought they were quite effective because because they were quite different. And and something like Freddy Krueger, that was that was a new invention 
that was you know it wasn't like they were bringing dracula back or werewolf back or frankenstein back or whatever it was like no no we we're gonna sort of do our own little thing and and but then that those things were so popular like Candyman, they've been now repeated and repeated you know to death as in halloween and friday the 13th are probably two of the you know uh worst um examples of you know how many of these films are there now Yo, man, it's cool. It's cool, man. It's cool. Like you say, to bring it back around to what you were saying, I think some of these m very modern things, like uh, the Jordan Peele films, um, Us and Get Out, were very effective. The two Ari Aster ones you've mentioned there, Midsummer and Hereditary. Uh, and of course, I think that I think the best of them at the moment is Robert Eggers with The Witch or um, The Lighthouse even, uh, is considered to be in a way a very, uh, you know, it's definitely bordering on that horror genre. Absolutely. I mean, we covered The Lighthouse in a previous uh, podcast here and we, and we said we gushed on it at the time. It's, it is an absolutely incredible film. Yeah. Um, we, I recently watched The Witch. Um, yeah. You'd said you've seen it before and said how, how, how great it is. Yeah. And it is a remarkable film that... Um, I think he did something really different, um, you know, and that's w what we're talking about here. These modern horror films have tried to do different things and, and approach horror in a different way, I think. Yeah. Um, and it created this eerie atmosphere um, all the way through. It wasn't about going, Whoa, you know, um, it was about creating this uneasiness in the pit of your stomach. Yeah. And that's a powerful thing to achieve, I think. And the only films I can compare them to, because the only films that apart from some of these recent ones that has done this to me before are some films from the 70s like Don't Look Now yeah. and uh, The Omen um, yeah. that create this atmosphere of what's next that this yeah. is not right this is not normal and um, I think they've managed to achieve that in things like uh, The Witch and you know incredible eerie atmosphere beautifully shot the, the music and everything and that to me Doing that in a film is far more scary than having someone jumping out the closet with a knife. Yeah. Um, well, that's these a cheap trick in it, really. Yeah. These films are very cerebral. They, they, you know, you get out of them what you bring to them in a sense. So if you're the type of person like you are, obviously, that likes to let your brain work and let your mind do all the all the background work then you're highly entertained by them. Whereas other people who are expecting a bit more of, you know, the formulaic kind of girl stuck in the house, ax murderer coming after you, you know, um, escape over the lake kind of, you know, horror film, they might watch something like The Witch or, or uh, Get Out or something and just think, oh, this is boring. I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't get it. You know what I mean? But, um, I mean, I agree with you. It's much more effective when your own mind is the one that's, conjuring up all the all of the scary stuff really because that's what you know makes you leave the light on when you go to bed or or you know uh, all of these sort of superstitious things and it's your own mind it's the power of your own mind to scare you is is really what's doing it in the first place i mean jump scares and gore and stuff like that it has uh, forgive the pun but it has been done to death done to death i know to go back to Ari Aster, Midsummer, uh, I thought was a phenomenal film. Absolutely. Um, and obviously has huge influences from something like The Wicker Man, but is very, very different if you sort of put them side by side and measure them up. But I found with Hereditary, it went a bit too far. It went a bit too far at the end where there was it sort of built it up for so long and you were, and it was very, very interesting, an incredible performance from Tony Collette um, and, you know, really sort of creepy atmosphere. But then at the end with all the fireworks, you know, um, pyrotechnics, people dancing about on the ceiling and all this sort of stuff, I, it, it just, it tried to be too much for me. But other than that, I thought, you know, he's an incredible filmmaker. Uh, and I, th I feel like I'm in the minority in criticizing Hereditary because it seems to be one of the most popular uh, modern films. I know you just watched it within the last couple of days, so so give me your rundown. Tell me what you thought of it. Yeah, I think I really enjoyed it. I thought it was uh, a really remarkable 
entry into horror, um, you know, in terms of recent times. Um, I liked the fact they dipped into the occult um, quite effectively and witchcraft and stuff like that. And it was more about the people. And especially for the first kind of two thirds of the film, the whole idea of like you, the, the person's in the corner of the room, in the top corner of the room, like pinned to the ceiling, you think at least, and the light comes on and they're not there kind of thing. It's really subtle and you're kind of looking at it and second guessing it. But it's creepy as hell and it's so effective, uh, these kind of compositions that they create to, to trick your mind, you know. It's, it's those those things in your peripheral vision that, that yeah. scare you, isn't it? You know? And it's uh, perfectly done. It does start... I mean, this, it does get some pyrotechnic stuff. Some of it I didn't mind, like the kind of being set on fire because the box or the book or something had been thrown into the fire. And So I didn't mind much of that. Mm -hmm. It was when like people started flying, floating throughout the, the room. I was like, uh, this is a bit... Uh, Exorcist or Fantastical. or something, you know. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and I that that did hurt it, I think. Yeah. Um, but apart from that, it was a really good attempt. <laughs> you know, some people like that though, and and so yeah. I can see why people were going, woo, uh, you know, about that. Um, it's just not to my taste. Yeah. Which a few of these have issues like that, you know, that back and forth. Some people might not like the endings to them. It's always one of them, you know, you either like or don't like how they wrap some of what these about, films up. Um, what about the ending of The Witch? Did you feel the same about that? Yeah, I did feel a bit like the end. for me, the ending of The Witch should have ended two minutes earlier. <laughs> and that would have been enough for me. And uh, the very ending was, for, for my tastes. Yeah, so you're saying much. if she just walked off into the woods at the end and that was it? would have been more yeah. I think yeah, I think you might have something there I, I I mean I'm not really into criticizing the witch too much because I fucking really loved it I thought it was a great film uh, because I haven't seen anything like that either at all or for a long time I like the setting you know New England setting and stuff like that fantastic but um, I can see where you're coming from with that kind of when it goes from the psychological and the cerebral to the fantastical, mythological, and you're starting to go, hmm. I, can, I, I, felt, can, I can see what you mean. I felt like that with um, Get Out, for example, like, you know, um, and I thought it was a fantastic premise. Yeah. And the it first was. two thirds of the film are sublime, all the little subtleties of the kind of um, subliminal and racism. And it keeps you and guessing like as well. It and it does you keep guessing, you guessing thinking, yeah. Ooh, is, it in, is he just, or is it. And it does, it, it leaves the chills and you're kind of trying to guess it and you're like, this is, what the hell's going on here? Yeah. Um, but the last portion of that film, for me, just goes silly, you know? And and that just kind of hurts it, really. I, um, it worked for me. I mean, you know, that I was okay with all that, to be honest. Um, because it was still within, like with uh, going again back to the Black Cat, it was still within the realms of the world we live in to a, to a degree, you know? Yeah. Um, this idea of um, swapping brains, or you know, it's it's not too fantastical. It's not like a, no, yeah, it, it's certainly a lot more grounded than a lot of the, the yeah. <laughs> and lot, Daniel Kaluuya's performance was great as well, and you know, it, it, I thought that I enjoyed that actually a lot more than I enjoyed Us. I actually did a review for Us. We'll put the link to that in the comments below. Um, I thought it was incredibly well made film and. Uh, Lapita and Yongo's performance was was just mind blowingly good. She plays in you know two different characters and everything. But again, like with Hereditary, I felt like it tried to be just too much at the end. I think it is, and um, it is the, the, the tricky part. But I think that as you, you know, I think what we've been talking about is these films have got um, a lot more grounded in reality in recent times. Yeah, um, a lot more believable and uh, focused more on not going boo and, and creeping you out in a general sense and uh, there's, I think there's a new flux of filmmakers now uh, with these yeah. films where it's like they're doing really interesting things definitely you know and um, that's where it works for me keep it real keep it simple you know if you get, if you want to creep someone I always think think to back when you were a little kid um, you know when you're like six, seven, eight years old what would really creep you it wouldn't be someone going boo you know, maybe you jump or something but that wasn't what would scare you um, seeing someone with a bit of blood, you know, might be a bit traumatic, but it, that's not going to scare you. What scares you is going, is there something in the corner of the room? Mm -hmm. 
There's something under you know, the bed. There's something under the bed, you know. The little, it's not the little the wardrobe, wardrobe is slightly open. And slightly stuff. cracked open, yeah. Of it's course. It's the not knowing, and that, and that is what has always scared everybody. What is out there? There you have it. Dave says, keep it real. You know what to do. <laughs> Just keeping it real, son. Well, there we go. That's our lot for weekly number 30. Happy Halloween to everyone. Thank you very much for joining us. Just enough time to tell you what we've been up to on our website this week. So uh, we have made a list of all the Halloween films that have ever been made. I think there's 12 of them, and we've ranked them from worst to best. So if you're interested in the Halloween franchise and you know our opinion on uh, what was good and what was not so good, then check that article out. There's a link in the description below. We've also got a new review up for The Changeling, Film and 5, reviewed by Greg there. Uh, that's up here on the YouTube channel and, of course, over on the website. The link is in the description down below. Uh, we've also done our reaction to the trailer for Uncharted, starring Tom Holland and Marky Mark Wahlberg. So if you want to <laughs> see us have a good laugh watching that trailer, then the link again is in the description below. And just a reminder, if you want to listen to us on the go, you can check out our podcast in audio format. Um, that's on uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all the vendors. Uh, we'll leave a link down in the description below so you can check those out as well. And it's also worth mentioning that we recently just set up our Discord server. So if you Discord too, then the link again is in the description below. Come and join us over there and let us know what you're up to. It'd be great to uh, chat with you over there. And Greg, would you, would you want a coffee, mate? Go on then. Have you got any coffee, mate? Uh, no, I haven't actually. I don't need to pop the shop. A uh, large black coffee. A what? Large black coffee. Do you mean a venti? Well, maybe one of our kind viewers will be good enough to support us and make a donation to us over there at buymeacoffee.com. Uh, the link again is in the description below. You can also join us on Patreon and become a pledge and... Um, then you can have a say on what we talk about on the podcast and what we review on our YouTube channel. So again, the Patreon link is in the description below. And of course, remember to join us on social media at More Movies For You. That's on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, etc., where you can see things like the movie of the day. Today's movie of the day has been sent directly from hell. <laughs> So there we have it, my friend. That's another week wrapped up. I'm wishing you a happy Halloween. Uh, next week, we'll be talking about Dune and The French Dispatch, which we are just about off to the cinema to watch now. So wishing everybody a great weekend. Take care of yourselves. Thanks very much for watching. Join us again on another More Movies Weekly. Well, that's it for this video. Please leave us a comment and let us know what you thought. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe right here on YouTube. To check out more of our articles and reviews, check out our website, moremovies.co.uk. And why not join us on social media? That's uh, at More Movies for you across the board. You know the score. And if you'd like to support us, consider buying us a coffee at buymeacoffee.com or you can become a More Movies patron over on patreon.com. All the links are in the description below. And to check out more of our filmtastic videos, click one of the buttons on screen now.